Hey everyone, and welcome to another Fantasy Author Lounge, the first Fantasy Author Lounge of 2020. So I am joined, very honoured to be joined today by Derek Allen Sidaway. Welcome. How are you doing, Derek? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Ben. That's a pleasure. So for the people watching who don't know who you are, or want to find out more about you, tell us a bit about yourself and your books and your journey. Perfect. So you can check all of my books out and everything at DerekAllenSidaway.com. That's kind of my shameless plug. <laughs> I started out, I was published, I uh, began as an indie publisher seven years ago. So November of 2013, coming nice. up on seven years. And uh, my first series was a kind of traditional Epic Fantasy, mm. wrote the first two books in that series. That's the Tudovar saga. Yeah. And then I did a prequel novella for that. And then I uh, published a couple other things. I uh, did some anthologies that you were part of. Yes, And then indeed. jumped over to another YA fantasy trilogy, the Griffin Writers Trilogy, mm -hmm. which is probably my best known series. That came out a couple years ago. Since then, I've delved into some lit RPG books mm -hmm. and one that was kind of uh, Pokemon based and one we're working on now that's more traditional epic fantasy. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm at. So I kind of my unofficial tagline is I write uh, epic and quick paced epic fantasy with heart. So characters Amazing. you want to root for that overcome odds. Um, even when the books are bigger, I try to keep the pacing going and keep yeah. things pretty intense. Sounds good. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you've had quite a journey. <laughs> you know, like you said, start with the epic fantasy. And then moved into, mm -hmm. like you said, a bit of YA, the game, lit RPG, obviously co-writing as well, which we'll talk about in a bit. But I mean, yeah, what, what's kind of prompted the switches between the genres? Well, the idea for Jim Tamer was one that came about uh, when I was in the middle of writing Griffin Writers back mm -hmm. in 2017. So I, when, when those were all finished up and I'd got those out to the world, I was thinking about the next project I wanted to work on. Yeah. And that was kind of right around the time that lit RPG was really finding its steam yeah. and going well. So I thought this is originally the, the idea for Gin Tamer wasn't necessarily lit RPG, mm -hmm. but it was something that worked really well for that genre. So yeah. I brought on a co-writer, AJ Cerna, that mm. I'd done a previous book with under one of his other pen names. And we just had a really fun time That's writing those cool. books. So yeah. all three of those are done and they're out. Yeah. And now we're uh, trying our hand. We just finished the, we're, I'm in the process of finishing the revisions for our next lit RPG, which is more uh, traditional epic fantasy based, nice. kind of in a World of Warcraft type world. And that's called God Mode. And it should God be out nice. uh, later this summer, early this fall. That sounds great. Yeah, God Mode. <laughs> Brilliant. We'll get some links up and all the covers as well, because you have some fantastic covers, haven't you, in terms of like across your whole series from the Tutuvar Saga to the Gin Tamers. Mm -hmm. Where, I mean, what's your secret to getting some great covers? <laughs> the guy I, I actually found, um, the, the guy that has done the cover for Into Exile and the Griffin Writers Trilogy, I actually found through 99design, so there's kind of a plug oh, for nice. them. <laughs> yeah, it's a good source. Back uh, five years ago or so, it seemed like every author podcast you listen to was sponsored <laughs> by 99design. So Absolutely, yeah. I found him, and I just really had a great time working with him. He did the what the current set of Jim Tamer covers. He did those. He did the Griffin Writers covers. Um, and as I mentioned, he did my Into Exile cover, mm. which was really great. And really, the, yeah. that was the first thing I used him for. I love that cover, even though it's so kind of good. an older book. Um, it's just really striking cover. Yeah. Um, probably be working with him moving forward on some of my series, too. But yeah, I, I just kind of lucked out and the stars aligned and I found <laughs> him. And we've been working together for quite a while since. I re and I really love the uh, kind of the, his style. Mm. I, I don't know exactly how to describe it. But Epic. just kind of that tone. I, uh, <laughs> some of the other authors that we interact with hearkened yeah. it to um, kind of a more uh, classic look. And I can't remember the series, but mm. anyway. Yeah, no, I think it's great. I mean, I say epic because it does. There's so much sort of dynamism in the actual image. There's always some sort of epic pose, especially with your Jim Tamers and having all of the different like animals fighting. I think it's brilliant. And so you've always nailed that, <laughs> which is great there. So, I mean, what's kind of prompted the change back to epic fantasy then? Is it sort of return to the roots? Is it something that you kind of just, you know, you've done exploring for a bit and now you want to come back to what you started with? Um, I, I think there are two kinds of good epic, uh, good lit RPG authors, and I'm, I'm going to class them by myself. As, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that up to the readers, but no, I All think right. we get the job done. There's the ones that are kind of 
the naturals that have that background, not only in gaming, but with a mm. lot of uh, tabletop gaming as well. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done a lot of tabletop stuff. I played a lot of video games across different genres. Mm. And I'm more of a, I have to really work to make sure that we hit that lit art, that, those game mechanics. Right, yeah. It's not necessarily natural for AJ and I. I think we pull it off and it's something that we're really cognizant of and we make sure we hit as we go through revisions. Mm. But I think there are other authors that really have a better flow for that. Right. Um, so while I've really enjoyed doing Gin Tamer, and we will have future Gin Tamer books, mm -hmm. um, and God Mode will be two books that we're excited for. That's cool. And with the potential of doing more of those, I also have an idea for a more cultivation type book that's mm -hmm. kind of more along the lines of what Andrew Rowe does, where it's not in a game, but there are game aspects, uh, sort mm -hmm. of like what Will White does as well. That's really but cool. I wanted to get back to epic fantasy just to mainly to revisit some of the worlds I've already been in. So mm -hmm. I've had people asking me since the last Griffin Writers book came out for something else there. and People yeah. really want Whoa. that. <laughs> they've, yeah. they've been patient for two years yeah. now waiting for that. Yeah. I also really want to go back to the Tudavar saga and that will probably be a complete rewrite, relaunch, wow. and republishing of everything, uh, changing of titling and everything. I, Like I said, that was my first book. And it's there's a lot of good stuff in it. Mm -hmm. But I think rather than capping it off with two more books, I mean, in seven years, I hope I've grown and improved as a writer. So yeah. it's kind of at a spot where I'm only halfway done with the series. I'd rather go back and do a really heavy revision mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. change some things around and just freshen yeah. that up and relaunch it as a new series. So really cool. the, the big reason for going back is that rather than opening up new series everywhere i've got three or four going i'd like to <laughs> expand with what i already have right, right now yeah. and i have a lot of uh unique stories that i'm looking forward mm. to doing and actually in addition to the rewrite of two of our saga the next books i'll have out with a different co-author uh katie cross oh, cool. will be set in the two of our saga world a few hundred years earlier mm. so probably what will happen is even though they're the second books i've written in the world That'll really be the introduction to people because that will be mm. the complete series before I get to the relaunch in yeah. probably two or three years. That's really interesting. Yeah, I think that's really cool. And especially, I know what you mean about having multiple series and then finding you've got too many worlds to juggle. <laughs> right. Yeah, because I'm going back to my original kind of world at the moment, Emanesca. And it feels nice to be back, but it feels, yeah, I can't, I've got all these ideas and I have to say no to them at the moment and just focus on what I've got. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you mentioned, I mean, co-writing obviously with AJ Sen already and then co-writing uh, co again in the future. I mean, what what's that like? Because it's something I've never done and I've always been very curious about in terms of the day-to-day -day logistics of it you know, who writes what, where, and also just the general kind of over, uh, sort of overall strategy behind the co-writing. So yeah, give us a little insight into how that works or how at least it works for you. And it's good that this is more for, uh, uh, more for readers to listen to because yeah. giving advice to authors who are looking for a co-writer, it's a hard thing. It's like giving advice to someone when they say, I want to get married, you know, you, <laughs> you, you can't be like, okay, this is what you're looking for. Yeah. It's different with every person. Of course, I've yeah. been really lucky in that uh, AJ and I first came across paths back in really early on in my writing career. Mm -hmm. He had kind of a Western sci-fi series out. Nice. Um, and we met through that. We did a, a little known book together called Golden Mane that was kind of a, a sci-fi spoofy, uh, like basically we called it Men in Black Meets Independence Day. Nice. Um, <laughs> it's still out there under a pen name we did if people want to look it up, but it really, <laughs> that was just kind of a fun one-off we yeah. did. Um, so between that and Griffin Writers, I didn't do anything with him. We were kind of in the loop with one another. Mm. And with the co-writing, again, it goes back to having all these ideas and then being an author who isn't a full-time author, mm -hmm. trying to decide not only what projects am I going to work on, but yeah. how can I get these out? It's impossible to keep up with readers, especially <laughs> the really ones. Oh, but yeah. They read fast. Oh, <laughs> like, you read for a book that it took me six months to write in a weekend. It's like, yeah. that's awesome. But at the same time, it's like, man, you know, just trying to keep up with that. Yeah. So man, it's really, <laughs> we're a really good fit together. Uh, and we've done it both ways. So with Gin Tamer, mm -hmm. we worked together on the really rough outline. And then I did the rough draft. He did a more uh, kind of in-depth outline mm -hmm. and I did the rough draft and he did the revisions. And then I kind of did just a read through before cool. we sent it off to the beta readers and editors. Yeah. Um, 
with God mode, it's actually been the other way around where I outlined, he did the rough drafts. Now I'm doing the revision. Mm -hmm. And again, that's, that's something that it's hard to know what you're looking for until you test it out, but we complement each other well, as far as our voices. Um, and his, his background's in film. So mine's a creative writing. There's, there's kind of some differences there that complement one another. Mm. And he has that unique, uh, insight that we share. And yeah, it's been a really great experience. Like I said, we've done it both ways where he's written the rough draft and I have with the Mithrum series, the duology, God Mode being the first book. Yeah. Um, it's really nice because we originally, it was going to be like a 200,000 word book. We've mm. since made the decision to basically cap that off in a way that tells a complete story at nice. about 100,000, 120,000 <laughs> words, and then tell a, the rest of the story in the second half. Yeah. So just with a project that big, that's something that when you're kind of an author on the side, yes. it could take you two years to get through something that large. Uh, so yeah. it's nice to, it's not like overall we save any time, but it's split between two people, which yeah, good. it's a case where one plus one equals three, I guess yeah. is the easiest <laughs> way to sum it. That's um, a good way to think of it. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, do you think it's how you're going to write ongoing? Is it something you enjoy so much that that's the way you want to write now? Or is it something that you think, yeah, you dabble in, but mainly stick to your own sort of projects? I think it'll be off and on. Uh, I'm really looking forward to doing this next series with Katie Cross. We've yeah. planned out the first book and I got about halfway through the first book before I, I, I realized I couldn't juggle back and forth between God Mode and mm. this other series. So I'm just trying to get this project done and then go on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> um, really excited to work with her just because she has some really great uh, insights and experience and understanding of really plot. Mm. And so just as we've gone through the outlining process for these books, it's been great to get her insights on the big picture, but also just a scene by scene thing as we get mm. down to it. Um, really what cool. we're doing there is I'll do the rough draft mm -hmm. and then she'll take over and do the revisions after that. Um, mm. We have our. Uh, she has another series out that was series out that we kind of connected with because it was similar to my Griffin writers. Nice. So the the other side of that is being able to introduce your book to new fans mm. through that other person writing with. Of course. So yeah. Really looking forward to those books as well. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the epic covers and hopefully reading them at some point as well. If I finally get through my TBR pile. <laughs> it's it's Excellent. it's a challenge. I've got <laughs> when you add up, you know, my audio books, the ebooks oh. I have, and then the print books, it's like. And then there's always more coming to it. Right? Exactly. You see a new chapter or you hear about someone's yep. book that you know or just one that <laughs> pop up. And so, yeah. It's just constant, isn't it? It really is. I mean, in a yeah. great way. I love it. It's great to see the market in such a healthy way. But my it's amazing. word. <laughs> just how many amazing books are out there right now. I think, oh, I know, too, yeah. I mean, one, growing up, you, you don't have the... I mean, we're we're about the same age. We didn't have ebooks. We're no. we're, we're getting up to the old geezers when we say there weren't ebooks. Growing up. <laughs> just one, not having the access, but two, just the amount of amazing books that have come out with the indie author movement. Oh, I know. Yeah, you, I, I would go from growing up where I have read the same series three times to it's <laughs> like I read a book once and I'll unless it's the mo one of my top 10 books, I'll never get back to that series just because mm. there's always more stuff I want to be checking out. Yeah. I mean, speaking of that market and also fans a moment ago, what are some of your kind of tips and tricks and things that you do as an indie author to break into that market and dominate it essentially? <laughs> I think one you talked about is the covers and I'm always looking to up my game with covers, whether it's the feedback I can give to the cover designers that I'm mm. currently working with, or just, uh, it, there's also an amazing amount of yeah. art work out there and cover designers. So it's also looking at new styles and working with new designers to get yeah. that first look. And then for me, it's really with the Griffin writers series. I, I did a lot of research into the Y fantasy genre mm -hmm. and, um, and I've talked about this before, but, I always found Griffin's interesting going back to playing uh, Warcraft 2 oh, yeah. <laughs> and something where dragon riders have been done and they're amazing. I love books with dragons, but no one had really been in that Griffin space. So my thought is always to take something that's been done and think of how I can maybe turn that a little bit. So you still have a lot of yeah. the fantasy conventions, mm -hmm. but it's just looking at fresh ways to tell that. Another example is... Uh, the Tudor Saga, it's definitely an epic fantasy with mm -hmm. 
castles and swords and all and all that good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. But I tried to the the idea with the landscape and the setting was what if uh, what if medieval Europe had been in North America, basically mm, during the same cool. time period. So yeah. some looping in and mixing in some of those uh, Native American cultures, mm -hmm. as well as the just the landscape of the American West and the, just all of the, the variety of landscapes and scenery mm. that we have here in the, on the North and South American continents. Yeah, that's amazing. I like how you're drawing in uh, from as well as your own experiences, but also yeah, trying to find new experiences through blending things together. I mean, I love Griffins as well. <laughs> so yeah, I really dig the idea of, uh, of Griffin Riders. Yeah. That's awesome. So where, in terms of inspiration then, uh, I mean, you mentioned a couple there, but I mean, what inspires you on a day-to-day -day basis or what, you know, what does your, uh, what do your sources of inspiration look like? I really start with small concepts, I guess you could say. So the idea of, you know, the, the Griffin Rider, going back to that mm. specific uh, unit in World of Warcraft 2 <laughs> yeah. and really rolling things out from there. Yeah. And what does that look like? Um, and then adding in, I really like, uh, I wouldn't call them mashups, but just taking concepts and ideas from different series that I love and mm. making them my own and kind of make, putting them all in the mixing bowl and see how they, how they end up. <laughs> That's it. Um, I also really like ways that, and this is kind of becoming almost a theme of what I'm doing, is uh, kind of magical creatures with that twist on them. So the Griffins, um, the Gin Tamer series mm. obviously features a lot of different That's creatures. It. Uh, the, the series I'll be doing with Katie Cross is going to feature basically uh, warriors who ride like giant wolves that are the size of horses. Amazing. So that's, yeah, just playing off of uh, some people really love the magic systems. For me, it's the, I guess it's the people who interact with animals lately has been yeah. the theme of what I'm doing. There's not a lot of that in God mode, but again, it was a situation where we said, what are some aspects of games that we really love? Um, mm. With AJ, he, he's a big uh, Japanese JRPG, Japanese RPG fan. So the easy one to think yeah. of is Final Fantasy. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and how that interacts with what we think of with traditional RPGs, mm. such as World of Warcraft or uh, Skyrim, you know, Elder Scrolls oh, and yes. things like that. <laughs> Yeah. And how those two kind of come together. So for me, it's a lot of little concepts and pieces that I mm. put together and then try to lay it all out and tell an awesome story about. Yeah, that's really exciting. I like that a lot, Derek. Yeah. Is there anything you want to get across? Because I've kind of gone through my questions now. <laughs> the, the biggest thing would be to try out my books. Um, the Gin Tamer series, for those who are fans of audio books, mm -hmm. Jim Tamer, the first two books are out now, and we had an amazing narrator, Oliver Wyman, who did the Monster Hunter books. Yeah. He's a great fit for Jim Tamer, uh, just sort of in the same genre. I also amazing. worked with Kate Rudd on the Griffin Writers trilogy, so that's out in audio as well. Um, Sounds good. And again, if you're if you're looking for, I'm as an audio listener myself, I find myself bouncing back between the 20 plus hour books and then the shorter <laughs> 9 to 10 to 12 hour books. So yeah. again, as I mentioned, mine are the books that I have on audio are faster paced. So if you're looking for a little bit quicker and lighter read uh, with still all of those amazing things that you love in epic fantasy, just kind of developing a little faster than you might yeah. get in, say, <laughs> a, a Will of Time book or something, check yeah. those out. Sounds and good. yeah, I've got a little bit of something for everything. So go on my website. I'd love to hear from you, get in touch and yeah. yeah, I hope you enjoy the books that I have out. Perfect. And <laughs> I'm sure you will. I mean, you have plenty of them, and I'm, I'm enjoying to get. I'm really looking forward to getting into your latest books, especially Jin Tamer, because I mean, you had me with the Pokemon description <laughs> or the allusion to Pokemon, because yeah, that was a big part of my childhood. And as soon as I saw the covers, actually, and I had the pleasure to animate a few as well, which was quite yes, nice. Yes, you yes. did, which, and they looked amazing. Yeah. That really adds another whole level to, the, oh, man, to yeah. the, the story you tell just through the cover. Yeah, that was so fun to do. And it was just, you know, it's always good working with such great art. So I'll definitely be digging into those. One day, at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you very much for joining us in the Fantasy Auto Lounge, Derek. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do in the future. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excellent. Thanks very much. See you soon. Yeah.